Today I wanted to make a quick video on how you can mount a remote file system using SSHFS. Now for those of you that have been following the channel for a little while, I did a video a while back, more than a year ago, maybe two years ago, on SFTP. SFTP is a secure file transfer protocol. It's something similar to SSH where you log into a remote machine, you can connect to that remote machine and you can transfer files between the remote machine and your local machine. You need a SFTP client though, so in my case, on my system, I have FileZilla installed. Uh, again, uh, I did a past video on this, I'll link to that video, but it's a pretty cool protocol, SFTP. All you need to do is enter your host name, which is the IP address of that remote machine or the domain name. In my case, I could use distrotube.com, my web server, and then my username, password, the port. The port for SFTP is typically port 22, and then click connect. And then in this two pane layout, this is my local file system. And then on the right hand pane, you will see the remote file system, basically the file system on my web server. And I can transfer files to the remote machine or from the remote machine. It's a really cool piece of technology, SFTP. But using S SFTP has its limitations. For one thing, those files they're that those directories that you're looking at through something like FileZilla, they're not actually mounted on your local file system. So I can't really access those files. I have to download them to my local machine first and then I can access them. But with SSHFS, you can actually mount a directory from a remote machine to your local machine and just have access to those files. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And for example, I'm going to use my laptop that you see behind me. We're going to mount the file system on that laptop here on my main production machine. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that SSH is installed on both your local machine and the remote machine. And on the remote machine, you need the OpenSSH server running. So let me switch to the desktop here on my main production machine. I'm gonna open up a terminal and let me, let me zoom in. And I am on an Arch-based system, actually on both machines. Both machines are running Arco Linux. And on Arch, you would sudo pacman dash capital S open SSH is the name of the open SSH package. And in Arch, it's great because both the open SSH client and the open SSH server are in this package, this one package. Now, if you are on a Debian or an Ubuntu based system, what you need to do is sudo apt install open SSH client for any desktops that need the client installed and you need to install open SSH server <laughs> for the servers and you need that running on the remote machine that you're going to try to access those files. The next thing you need to do is make sure that the SSH server is running on the remote machine you're trying to access. So to do that, if that machine is running systemd, which most machines will be, you would run sudo systemctl start sshd, and that starts the sshd uh, server. And if you wanted to enable that so it's always running, you would systemctl enable sshd, and then sudo systemctl start sshd. I've already got SSHD running on that laptop. The next thing you need is the IP address of the remote machine you're trying to get into. Uh, typically, if you have access to the machine, you could just run IP space ADDR for IP address, and it will give you the IP address of that machine. I already have the IP address of my laptop. And if I wanted to check and make sure that I could actually access that laptop, make sure that our machines are networked together, and here all my machines are actually on the same network, but just to make sure I have access to it, I could try to ping that IP address of that laptop, which I know is 10.0.0.25. Uh, I put an extra dot in there. Let me try that again. Ping 10.0.0.25. And I am getting a ping. Control C to cancel the ping. Now, one thing about the ping is th this is not a great time for a ping. I mean, it's more than three milliseconds per ping. Typically, uh, on most machines, you're probably going to get well under one millisecond on the pings. But my laptop is just over Wi-Fi. So we may have a little bit of a latency issue here, but it, it's fine for purposes of this video for this demonstration. I'm going to clear the screen here. The next thing you want to do is read the documentation on SSHFS. So if I man SSHFS, you see this is, well, 
not a terribly long man page, but eh, it's got some stuff to it. I'm going to quit out of that. A better way to get what we need is SSHFS space dash H for the help flag. And this returns a lot of the, the kind of information you had in the man page, but a, more condensed. And basically what, what I really want is that first line, the usage of SSHFS you see. Typically, you want to run this command, sshfs user add host colon the directory that we're trying to access on the remote machine space and then the mount point here on my local machine. Now, that's going to be a problem because I don't have a mount point here on my local machine just yet. We actually have to create that. So what I need to do is... Where do we want to mount things typically in Linux? Well, you typically want to mount things to slash MNT slash mount. So if I CD into slash MNT here on my system and do an LS, you know, it's an empty directory right now. I'm going to create a directory so it can be a mount point for my laptop. Now that laptop behind me is a Toshiba satellite. So I will do sudo mkdir for make directory Toshiba. And then we have to give it our sudo password. You have to use sudo to make a directory in slash mnt. By the way, this directory, the Toshiba directory I just created, is going to be owned by root. You can see when I run a ls, it's owned by root. We need this to be owned by our user. So we need to sudo ch own and then dt colon dt. So we're going to change it to the dt user and the dt group. And then Toshiba. And do a ls. And Toshiba is now owned by DT. So if I CD into the Toshiba directory, you can see it's just an empty directory. I'm going to CD back up into the parent directory, which is slash MNT. So now let's actually log into my laptop with SSHFS. So SSHFS. And remember the format is the username. DT is the user on that laptop. At the IP on that laptop was 10.0.0.25. Then we have to do colon, and then the directory we're trying to access. Now, I could just do root, and then I would have access to everything on that laptop. I really don't need to do that, though. I'm just going to do slash home slash dt, then space, and then the mount point that we want to mount that to here on the local machine. Remember, we created slash mnt slash Toshiba. If I hit enter right now, it's going to ask me for the password for that machine. And now I get a prompt. You see, I'm back in slash MNT, of course, here on this machine. If I LS, you see Toshiba is still there. But this time when I CD into T Toshiba here and do an LS, I have a file system. That is a home directory, right? It's a typical Linux home directory. That is the home directory on that machine. We have mounted the home directory on that machine to slash MNT slash Toshiba here. And now I can do anything I want you know, I can access any of these files and directories. If you wanted to see this in a graphical sort of way, I mean, I could open up PC Man FM and get a graphical file system here. So if I navigated up the file system and went to slash MNT Toshiba, you know, again, this is the home directory on that machine. And I could move files around, copy things. I could open things. If I wanted to open this image, which is located on that machine I could right here in SXIV on this machine that is what that particular image is it's just the Arco logo I could open up you know my XNet RC on that machine or my bash RC on that machine actually to just prove it is that machine I will open up my bash RC so this is the bash RC on that machine over there this is definitely not mine this is the default bash RC for Arco Linux now, the install on my laptop is pretty fresh. I don't have any videos to access or anything like that. But if I you know, had videos on that, I could just open them up here in MPV or VLC on my local machine here. It's really great. SSHFS is pretty fantastic technology. Let me close PC Man FM and clear the screen here. Now, probably the next thing you want to know is how do you unmount this? Maybe you don't want that remote machine always mounted to your local machine well you need to run this command user mount space dash u space and then the directory we're unmounting here so in my case slash mount slash Toshiba it says fail to unmount I wonder if I needed to sudo that probably 
and the sudo didn't work either. I'm an idiot, though. As soon as I got this error, I immediately realized what I did. And anytime you try to unmount a directory in Linux, and I've made this mistake a million times, I'm glad I did it on camera for you guys, is don't be in the directory that you're trying to unmount. It won't work. So you see, I'm in slash mnt slash Toshiba. Let me cd up one directory and get into just slash mnt. And now if I run fuser mount space dash u slash mnt slash Toshiba, it unmounts just fine. Toshiba is still there when I ls, but if I cd into that directory and do an ls, this is just an empty directory now, right? That directory will still be here but it's no longer a mount point and it's just an empty directory until the next time I want to mount it. So that was just a very quick video on how you can mount a remote file system using SSHFS. It's really cool for those of you that have multiple computers on a local network at home. It really makes accessing files amongst your various machines a lot simpler. That way you don't have to fool with things like SFTP or, you know, actually physically transferring files with things like USB sticks. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this show. Without these guys, you wouldn't know about mounting remote file systems using SSHFS. You wouldn't know about it. You also wouldn't know about it if it wasn't for the support I get from all of these names you're seeing on the screen. Each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen help support my work over on Patreon because this channel is community sponsored. We have no corporate sponsors here at DistroTube. If you'd like to support the channel, consider doing so. You'll find me over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.